episode of Cowabunga Corner, we are talking about Volume 1 of the Mirage Ninja Turtles. There's a total of 62 issues that came out during this volume, and they are fantastic. These started out with the very first issue, which is right here, that came out on May 5th, 1984. This is Eastman and Laird's first real hit, and of course their main hit, because Ninja Turtles got known worldwide. Even though they did the Fugitoid and a few other comic books here and there, this was the thing that made them known around the world and that a lot of us fans still cling to. This comic introduced the main storyline. We got the four turtles, Splinter, and then there's the Shredder. And we learned the history of how the turtles became who they are. This history is the most in-depth history on why the Shredder is the way he is. Most areas of the Ninja Turtles do not go back into why he chose the route of evil, just shows when Hamato learned that he chose the route of evil. But inside this comic, Splinter knows why. As an eight-year-old boy, he knows his brother was killed, and he wants revenge. And so this ninja clan got him, and twisted him, and trained him, and got him ready to actually go out there and get the revenge, and that's what I think is the best storyline for the Shredder. This is only one issue. Shredder was not meant to become the Ninja Turtles arch nemesis. The Turtles kill him in this one issue. And then the return of the Shredder in Return to New York is not really Shredder, it's a clone of Shredder. Shredder did not come back from the dead. No, there was clones that Shredder had made up and well, the Turtles fought them and killed them too. That was it. That was the end of the Shredder. Of course, the Shredder's name has come up since, and they had to do other storylines based on the Shredder, which I think happened more because of the other medias out there taking Shredder and making him such a huge part of the Ninja Turtles. I think the fans cry for the foot, and the Shredder became so powering that the uh, when they're writing the comics, they're like, what should we do? Well, we can do something along what the fans already know, which is the Foot Clan. So we got to the At War, where the Foot Clan came back, and it was all about what happened in those first few issues, which I really do enjoy. I am a fan of the Foot, I have to confess. I started off watching the cartoon series, so I knew Shredder as their arch enemy. When I started reading the comics, I was a little surprised at how little Shredder was actually in them. With the Mirage comics, Eastman and Laird got very busy and started doing their own things, drifting away from the comic book. They brought in a lot of guest writers and artists, and this gave us a lot of little side stories and things going on with the Turtles that did not match up to the main storyline. But they did pick up a handful of fantastic artists and writers who have stayed with the Turtles since the 80s. We have Michael Dooney, Jim Lawson, Ryan Brown, Eric Talbot, AC Farley, let's not forget Dan Berger. These guys are fantastic. They, they have done so much for Ninja Turtles, from the Mirage comics, the Archies, to toy designs, even script series that end up being in the TV shows. They are the core, the heart of the Turtles at Mirage Studios. My favorite Mirage comic goes back to the guest artist. It goes to issue number 37, and we're talking Twilight of the Ring. Now, this comic was very well written. It was a nice pack of adventures through the woods for the turtles, where you get to see some character development between the brothers. Not where there's a huge arch enemy that they have to face, who knows who they are, or anything like that. It was just this adventure that they took and it was fun. The artwork was different but good. I really enjoyed the work of Rick McCollum and Bill Anderson. These two people put together one of my favorite issues and I really appreciate it. There was also a few other issues where you saw their work and this is what I liked about Mirage. There was just so much out there that every fan had something on a different level they could enjoy. Any fan who's read the comics can tell you about the river and how wonderful a story that was for Raph. The Mirage comics is the backbone to a lot of what the fans have seen. Uh, the first movie is based uh, very loosely off the comic books more than the cartoons. You have the Four Kids series, which is based very heavy in some areas 
off of the comic book that is not the same as the cartoon. So you see a lot of stuff going back and forth with the Mirage comics. I personally did not read the Mirage comics until 1992. But in 1992, I was getting my chance to meet Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. So I wanted to read their version of the Turtles and see what I was getting into by going to this convention that was based for the comic book. Now, the convention itself was actually a celebration for Volume 1. Issue 50 was coming out. In fact, it premiered that day at the Comic Con, August 23rd, 1992, Turtle Con in Dover, New Hampshire. We got the City at War comic. The first one came out. One with barely any little dialogue. Uh, there's some newscasters talking, but a lot of it was a lot of just following the pictures and very well drawn out to where you could just follow right through there. This comic actually got t-shirts and posters as everyone was going there in pure excitement for it and when we got there we were not let down. The City at War comics brought us through this adventure to where we see the turtles questioning what they went through in the earlier comics. Why did we kill the Shredder for Splinter? This is not our fight. We don't have anything against the Foot Clan. We did that for our sensei. Now we have to be able to move on and find out where we're going. And some of the conversations between the turtles right there saying they need to figure things out just shows the intense relationship they were having. Fantastic done, written by Eastman and Laird, artwork, we got a lot of AC Farley covers, we got a lot of Jim Lawson's work inside the books. It was something that I looked forward to every issue. Now, Mirage Volume 1 is one of those things where if you like the original cartoon series, you may or may not like the Mirage comics. And the reason why is the original cartoon series was taken from these characters of the comic books, but they were all changed. David Wise got in there, added a few lines that changed the Turtles' personalities quite a bit from who they were in the comics. In the comics, they kill, they drink, they actually do go into full intense violence in their fights. It's not as goofy to where they're saying jokes throughout the full fights. They're out there to take out whoever's up against them, and when they take them out, they don't mean for those people to be able to return. So there's a lot more sharpness to it. It's not meant to be a lighthearted story. And when people think of the original cartoon series of the Ninja Turtles, they think of Raph telling jokes, and they think of Michelangelo eating pizza and yelling party all the time, when inside the comic books, those two are sparring buddies, and Raph has his temper that you see in the movies in the 4 Kids series. Also, the story on April O'Neil is big different from the original cartoon series. It is a lot closer and almost exact to what you see in the 4 Kids series, to where she was an assistant to Baxter Stockman, they created the monsters together, Baxter turns on her, she's in the sewer, and she is saved by the turtles. This storyline coexists inside the 4 Kids series and the original Mirage comics. If you are looking for the Mirage comics, you can probably find them at the um, Mirage licensing website, or you could find them on eBay. And if you go to conventions, you could find a lot of them inside dollar bins. I highly recommend checking out the Mirage comics, even if you are not sure if you will enjoy it because of the serious side, give it a try and then judge. You can't judge by what you hear from one person or another, as I've said in most of my stuff, you have to be able to go out there and view it yourself and see what you like. Everyone's different. I enjoy it, I know many other fans who enjoy it. And I hope that you enjoy it too. I hope to see some reviews inside the comment area. Uh, please do some video replies if you wish. And let us know what you think of the very first volume of the Mirage Turtle Comics by Mirage Studios. In the meantime, we'll see you next week with an interview with Baxter Stockman. Scott Williams at New York City Comic Con.